What is going on, you guys? Welcome to the full dating guide for young men ages 20 to 25. So this is going to be specifically for guys who have just graduated college or under the age of 25. But if you're a guy who's older, you'll probably get some stuff out of this, especially if you're dating women in that age bracket. Um, this is going to be also relevant for guys who graduated high school. Maybe they're not yet 20 years old, but you know they're not going to college. Okay, if you're in college, yeah, you probably might learn a few things. Um, but in general, what I would say is I would say that this is going to be most relevant for guys who have just graduated college because this is one of the hardest times to date women as a guy. You know, you're at your you feel like you're at your least attractive to women um, in terms of your life because you're competing against guys who are older than you. You're out in the real world. You know, there's a lot of factors involved that I'm going to get into in this video. So why don't we just get right into it right now? OK, so what is this going to cover? Let me make this bubble a little smaller. So it's not too distracting. Um, so the challenges men have immediately out of college and all the way up to age 25. So these are challenges that I've dealt with. These are challenges that I've helped dozens, hundreds of clients get through. Um, I'll talk about my story of improving my results with women at that age. So after I've talked about the challenges, I'll talk about kind of like, you know, what I did to get through those. Um, we're going to talk about the solutions, uh, specific stories of clients that have completely turned their results around and what you can do right now. So if you're a guy who's between the ages of 22, uh, 20 to 25, just graduated college, you know, this is going to cover practical things that you can do right now to better your situation. OK, be more attractive to women, get the kinds of girls that you want to get um, and ultimately be successful in your dating life. OK, because when you're at that age, you know, it's kind of confusing. You don't really know what to do. You know, I hear a lot of guys saying they don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. So we're going to talk about uh, exactly that in this video. All right. Um, so let's go through it. All right. So why is dating hard after college? After college, you're growing up um, in an environment where you're coddled. Like, if you're growing up in through school with your parents, everything is telling you what to do. There's always a next step. Okay, oh, I got to study for this test. I got to graduate. I got to go to college. After college, you know, I have to get a job. But once you get out of college, you know, you're kind of like left to your own devices, right? Your social groups are a little bit more random. Um, not everything is planned. You're not taught to make your own decisions, and that's what really makes men attractive. Part of the reason why women like bad boys so much when they're in school is because bad boys know how to make their own decisions. You know, they're doing that by ignoring the uh, the rules and um, you know getting in trouble and all that stuff. But they are making their own decisions, which is a very masculine thing. You don't learn a lot of masculine habits in school. Like you literally have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. Okay, that's not going to teach you how to be a guy who makes his own decisions. Women want a guy who can make his own decisions, goes on his own way. They want someone who they feel comfortable following. But a guy who's followed rules and who's done everything by the book his whole life, that's not a guy that women are going to look at and say, oh, that's a guy who's very capable of leading on his own because he hasn't led on his own. Right. And you've gone through your whole life learning this. You, you've learned how to follow, but you've never learned how to follow yourself. And so that's really the tough part um, about uh, graduating, you know, and then you lump that in with dealing with guys who are, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s. Right. You're competing with men who are older, smarter, have more resources and have better game than you. Uh, I'm almost 33. OK. And as I talk to you right now, I am a thousand times better with women than I was when I was 22. OK. I'm like if I was if 22 year old me and 33 year old me we're going after the same girl. I mean, all things the same, it's, it's, it's no contest, right? So you're dealing with these guys on a regular basis. And the problem with women is women do find these men attractive, right? But you have a leg up and I'm gonna talk about what the leg up that you have on these guys is, all right? Also, the ease of access to women is no longer there. Look, when you're in college or you're in high school, you see these girls every single week at school. You see them every single, day when you go to class, right? Maybe you go to a party in college and your room is literally right there or it's in the dorms or something like that, right? You graduate and you don't have that anymore, right? You have to go out and meet women and you have to go out and meet them in this like different environment where there's, you know, better people competing for those same women, okay? Um, also immaturity and general stupidity, right? <laughs> Look, man, I've been a 22 year old guy and I knew I was an idiot at that time. I knew it. I knew I was going out and I was doing stupid things. And look, there's nothing wrong with doing stupid things. That's how you learn. 
I'm glad I did those things so I can like, you know, I have some funny stories. I I'm glad that I, I learned my lessons. It's one thing for your parents to tell you, hey, you know, uh, don't do drugs. It's another thing to like see the experiences of doing those drugs and seeing the repercussions that they have on your life and being able to make your own decision. Right. Because if you're just doing what you're told, I, I feel like there's knowing it and then there's really feeling it. And you don't get a lot of that because you don't have a lot of experience doing all the different things. Also, because you've been coddled in school and by your parents. OK, um, not knowing what to say or do with women. That's something that I get a lot. Um, and as a guy, if you're a young guy, you have to deal with young women. And that sucks. Young women are probably almost as dumb as you are. And so when you're dealing with these women, <laughs> you have all the problems that they have too. You're dealing with them, right? And then there's also the pressure to sleep with as many women as possible. So I came from a generation where that was like really impressed on people. You know, you were seen as less of a man. You know, I knew guys that did very well in college with women. You know, their number was really, really high. You know, I knew a couple guys who I later became friends with uh, after college who had slept with, you know, over 100 women in college. And I was really insecure about that. And I thought that that was, um, you know, I had not slept with nearly that many women. Um, I hadn't slept with any women really until I got to college. Um, so, you know, that was a really insecure and unconfident place for me. And it actually dictated a lot of my behavior after that, which I'll get into. Okay. So the first step of this, look, if you're a guy who's under 25, you've graduated college, there's going to be a lot of things that frustrate you. You're going to be angry with women. You're going to be angry with your circumstance. You're going to be angry with life. You know, um, when I grew up, we were kind of taught that, you know, you could be successful. You could do all of these crazy things. Oh, you have to worry about that later. You don't have to worry about that now. Like there was a lot, like there's a lot of lies that you get taught at a young age. And as a millennial, you know, when I talk to Gen Z people, they have to deal with their own set of lies that were taught to them. And when reality hits you and you see where you are and what is actually possible is very frustrating, right? So you, you kind of have to accept where you are now. You are not where you want to be and that's okay. Right. But you have a lot of advantages. So as, uh, as you're below 25, for some guys, you're going to be at your physical peak in terms of over, overall attraction. You can burn calories a lot quicker. Um, I still think men can get much more physically attractive as they get older, if they know what they're doing, stay in shape, all of those things, looking more mature, getting their fashion down, all that stuff. Um, after college is typically the hardest time for men to attract the women that they want. Uh, the same women you go in college now have access to men in their late 20s and early 30s, like I just talked about. So the way that you beat them is this. You become the guy that she knows. You become a guy like the guy that I'm going to be describing in this webinar. We're going to talk about this for, you know, it's probably will go for an hour or something like that. And we're going to talk exactly about what that kind of guy is. What's the kind of guy that does well in his early twenties. And I'm going to do this irrespective of looks. So if you're a, a really good looking guy and you get tons of women coming to you, great. That's, you know, the stuff that I'm going to be teaching you is for guys that aren't that good looking that haven't had women historically come to them. This doesn't mean that if you're a really good looking guy, you won't get a lot out of this because honestly, the same things that work for good looking guys work for guys who, um, so some stuff doesn't work, but the stuff that works for guys that aren't very good looking, if a good looking guy does it, he can be, he's, he's going to be successful too. Okay. You just have to know kind of where you're at in terms of the scale. Okay. And so what we're going to talk about is exactly what to do, even if you weren't blessed with looks, even if you weren't blessed with a lot of money, you know, you don't come from money or any of that sort of stuff. When I, when I was at this age, I was broke for most of the time and I did extremely well with women. It was money and women. Uh, they had almost nothing to do with each other when, when I was, uh, when I was growing up. Yeah. It helps to have money. And as a, in your early twenties, you should start thinking about money. It's one thing I wish I would have done it sooner. Um, uh, but it's not required. And I find that sometimes having a lot of money, guys think that just by having the money, women are going to come to them and they get very disappointed when they don't. Okay. So let's talk about my story. So in college, I struggled at the beginning, right? I was a virgin coming in. Um, I dated women I didn't particularly like, or was attracted to, you know, the woman I lost my virginity to was not attractive in my opinion. Um, and I went through some tough times, you know, I was really into this girl, my freshman year. Um, we were hanging out a lot as friends 
and I really liked her. I had this like huge crush on her, and I was like so in love with this chick, and I was like thinking about her constantly. I was very obsessive, and so eventually I worked up the courage to ask her out. Okay, so I eventually asked out this girl, and you know we went on a couple dates, and then she totally ghosted me, and then she uh, ended up going out with some other guy. I was very sad about that, um, and I was so hurt that you know that summer I remember like was like the entire summer I was like trying to get over this girl by like doing different things I was really lonely I didn't feel like I didn't have that many friends I wasn't I didn't feel like I was cool um you know I had had sex with like one person at the beginning of the year who you know I like I said I didn't find particularly attractive at all so I was feeling pretty low um and so then the next year I got a girlfriend um who again you know I wasn't particularly that into um, I think she was a nice girl. Um, but she came with a lot of problems. She was, you know, not very happy with me a lot of the time. Um, and, you know, during that period, around sophomore year, uh, the midway through sophomore year after we broke up, you know, I decided that I was going to really try to make this work. Um, and around that time, the girl who I dated my freshman year, two years later, she comes back into my life. And then we start talking again. And we actually ended up started dating. We started dating and um, we started a sexual relationship and it was like the best two months of my life up until that point. I was so happy. Uh, I thought this was great. And then so I was going to ask her to be my girlfriend. And then I asked her to be my girlfriend and it was just, it didn't go very well. Um, she said no. She said she didn't want to do that. She said she didn't want to have sex again. And then I kind of didn't hear from her after that. She kind of ghosted me. And um, for her to do the same thing that she had done two years previously really crushed me. That whole thing, I didn't fully get over that for about two years, right? I was doing other things, but I would think about her probably every day, you know, at some point in time for, for two years. It really affected me. And during that time, I decided that I was going to figure this out. I was going to figure out how to master dating, attraction, women all of that stuff, be the best that I could be, even if it killed me. And so the solution that I did, I didn't know what else to do. Um, I learned at that time from like some old pickup videos and like uh, that book, The Game, it just, it sounded like going out a lot was the thing to do. Uh, if I went out a lot, then maybe I could change my circumstances. When I was younger, I thought like the way that you looked pretty much determined who you were gonna be attracted to. And that was the first time that I had heard people who had kind of punched above their weight that had been more successful than their looks or their circumstance had uh, given them. And I was really inspired by that. And so I was like, look, I'm gonna, I don't know if this is true, but I'm gonna try it as hard as I can and see if it actually works. Luckily it did, but the journey was really, really hard, okay? So I just started going out a ton and I had some success my senior year. So as you can see in the first picture here, this is when I joined my freshman year. Um, I wasn't, you know, <laughs> just a skinny kid right there and then this is a photo of me senior year probably the coolest photo that i ever took my senior year this is uh with some female friends of ours um one of the girls i was dating at the time that was the coolest picture that i had taken and what i didn't realize was that that would be the coolest picture that i would take for the next few years um because after college was really rough okay so probably up until my senior year i had slept with maybe like four women then after uh, my senior year, I probably had sex with, I probably had sex with nine women um, in, my, uh, in my senior year. And of those nine women, I would say probably three of them were women that I was actually like happy about, that I actually thought were, were, were good looking, were, were hot. Um, and uh, then things didn't get so great. So after college, I didn't get laid for almost a year after. And believe me, I tried. <laughs> like, I was going out a lot. Um, and, and until eventually, you know, I was going out like maybe once or twice a week. And then I was like, you know what? I got to really ramp things up because um, th this is not going well. Enough. So I started going out five nights out of the week. And I had a sales engineer job working at Oracle. That's a picture of me right here. Literally didn't know how to smile at all. <laughs> There's little Lloyd. Um, so I'm going out. Five nights out of the week. Here's a picture of me with some girl that I met who I, you know, realistically probably wouldn't have talked to too much, you know, once I learned all this stuff. 
Um, yeah, I was going out a lot. I was going out a lot. I had my head shaved. Um, and uh, I paid a pickup coach, actually, because I was so lost, who constantly yelled at me and eventually kicked me out of the program. He was kind of a crazy guy. Um, but just by having a guy there who was, like, keeping me accountable, who was, like, making sure that I went out um, – and, you know, I didn't want to get yelled at when I, I tuned into to the call the next week. It actually got me some decent results. I, you know, actually got laid from that. All right. And then I did this for like three years, three years. And so this is kind of what happened after those three years is I started. I didn't take very many pictures, but I tried to find as many pictures as I could with all the different women that I was seeing at the time. Um, I started getting friends, you know, after about by the age of 25. I had slept with probably around 150 women. Okay, I really cared about getting my count up because I thought that if you had sex with over 100 women, um, you were cool. I thought that was like what made you cool. And it was kind of funny because after I hit 100, I was like, I still kind of felt the same. I felt a little better. Uh, I was a little more confident in myself. Um, but I thought I was going to feel a lot better. I thought it was going to be, I thought I was going to feel like the man. And um, yeah, I, I did not feel like as much of the man as I thought I did, right? I was proficient at walking up and talking to women. I was approaching women, um, like I said, five nights out of the week. I would go out during the day as well, too. Um, I had a good social circle of guys to go out with. and Because when I first started this, I didn't have any guys to go out with. Um, it was literally just going out by myself. Because um, the people who worked at my company, they didn't really want to go out that much. Occasionally, they'd go out. If they did, they wouldn't approach. So I'm like, I got to do this on my own. So I started going out on my own. And then I met some people through like um, friends or whatever, um, or just honestly out. It was kind of random at times. Um, and I had a pretty good social circle of people that I was, I was going out with regularly. Ironically, those friends ended up being almost more important than the girls, right? Because they're the person you're hanging out with the most. So I knew I still had work, but felt a lot better about myself, could see the potential of success, right? So 150 women, you know, I'd, I think I'd had maybe like a couple threesomes at that time. Um, I'm not going to get into threesomes and all that stuff um, on this call. But, uh, yeah, I, I started to feel a lot more confident at around this period. So the challenges that I spoke about earlier, what are the solutions? What are some of the things that worked for me? Okay. I fought, I fought the misinformation, the lies that I had been told you know, younger, what are some of the lies? The lies are like, just be yourself and everybody find somebody, you know, <laughs> right? Um, you know, uh, you know, women like guys who are kind and nice and all that stuff. And yeah, being nice and kind definitely is important, but it doesn't actually make you more attractive. Okay. Women want a guy who is nice and kind, but that doesn't affect his attractiveness. Okay. Um, it just affects them wanting to deal with him. Right, so if you're an unkind person, but you're really attractive, women will put up with it, but they prefer you to be kind. If you're an attractive person and you're kind, then women love you. Okay, they they still they keep wanting to hang out with you, so it's better. But it doesn't actually raise your attractiveness at all, right? Um, I learned that you have to get out. You know, me getting out, even though I got no success my first year of going out, helped, right? Even though I didn't get the stats, even though I didn't get laid, even though I wasn't, you know, dating anyone that I liked, um, I felt like that really helped me. I learned a lot during that period. I learned slowly, and I want you guys to learn that slowly as you go through this, um, but it did help, right? Um, I built a social circle. I built, did this kind of by accident because I, you know, at that time, I was like, fuck friends. I'm not into friends, but it really helped, you know? I found a way to meet women and be comfortable with being patient. You know, pa this probably took me the longest time. Maybe it's something that I didn't learn too well until I got older than 25 because I was a super impatient person. You know, I would go out on a date with somebody and if she didn't, you know, didn't come home with me that night, I would think she wouldn't like me. You know, I, I thought she I thought she wasn't into me if she didn't come home with me that night. Very toxic uh, line of thought that I don't want you guys to be thinking, okay, because it's not true. If you're patient, you can get much, much higher quality women. And if I had been more patient, I probably would have. Um, but yeah, there was plenty of women who, when I first approached them, you know, maybe it didn't work out, but later on down the line when they were more available, um, or when things changed or they saw me leveling up, you know, that they ended up coming around, right? Um, make as many mistakes as you can. 
definitely didn't mess up on that. I made a lot of mistakes that I learned from. And that's part of why I have a channel is because I learned so much during that period. The reason why I've had more success and why I'm comfortable talking about this is because I've messed up so much. I've tried and done every single problem that my clients come to me with. Like I've, I've made that mistake. You know, I've done the bad thing. I've done the embarrassing thing. You name it, man. I've, it's happened to me. Right. And so that's why uh, I'm so proficient at talking about this. And in your early 20s, that's the time to be making mistakes. If you don't make mistakes and you don't learn. Right. If you don't do anything, if you're not getting out there, if you're not trying, you're not learning. Just watching videos is, isn't enough. In fact, during that period, you know, there was a, there was a time for two years where I stopped watching videos completely. And all I did was just go out constantly because I'd watched enough pickup stuff during that time. And the pickup companies at that time were like a real social dynamics. So I met some of those guys. I actually met them, but I had already watched all of their videos and all done all that stuff. So there was no point in me um, watching that. The only thing that was left for me to, was to hire a pickup coach, which I did, which I did. And I didn't have a great experience with him because he was kind of crazy. That's one of the reasons why I changed my program to be the way it is, is so um, it actually gets people better results. But even just by hiring a guy who was a crazy dude, um, I got better results with him just by putting that focus on it, putting that skin in the game made me better by doing it, right? Uh, take advantage of the opportunities as you can, right? Meet as many people as you can. I did that, right? And start finding ways that you can make money. That's the one thing that I wish I would have done better at. Like, you know, money is that you don't, I didn't really care about money at that time because I realized money didn't directly translate into me getting women. It does it indirectly translates into getting women if you know how to use it. Um, I didn't know that game at that time. It took me later until I actually started making money to, for me to learn that game. But finding ways to make money, I wish I would have done more with that. I wish I would have started this stuff when my, in my early 20s. I didn't start really posting content until I was 27. Where to go as an under 25 year old guy. So this is the question. As you can tell, a lot of the places I went to when I was growing up was bars and I went to clubs. I did not like clubs. I would try and avoid clubs. I wanted to be able to hear the person talking. I wanted to be able to, you know, flirt and do all of that stuff. If she can't hear me speak and she can barely see me, I just didn't feel like that was a great venue to be in. So I went to a lot of bars. I went to a lot of parties. I went to a lot of uh, outdoor events. But guess what else I did? I was part of an intramural soccer league, and I met some of my best friends through that, right? Um, I went to I, – I was head of a Toastmasters club. Now, most of those people didn't come out with me or party with me, but um, I got a lot better at speaking during that, right? I did a lot of – and there was other events. Like if somebody invited me to something during my first two years of me going out, I just said yes. I just – I went out and I tried it, right? Um, but for me, the best events were going to house parties by far. Me knowing somebody, me get, getting invited to their house. If there was a house party, there was a lot of different people there who I didn't know. That's when I could really meet people and make an impression. If it was just a pregame with coworkers, didn't do anything for me. But a true house party full of new people, those were the best parties because the women were so much friendlier, um, especially if you know it was a party where there's a good ratio and the girls were hot. Like That was the best. And so there was like certain parties during the year that I knew were going to be good and getting just invited to one good event can change your life. Doing one approach can change your life. That's what I learned is like, there's so many times where it doesn't work, but it can all turn around in an instant. Right? So you want to approach a lot, but don't approach directly. What I mean by that is a lot of people think that approaching means walking up to a woman and saying, Hey, I thought you were cute. I thought I'd come say hi. My name's Lloyd. How you doing? And dude, I did that approach a lot and sometimes it worked, right? But a lot of times it didn't. And a lot of times it led to me texting somebody who didn't text me back. And a lot of times it led to me dating women that, you know, were a little bit, um, they, they weren't as attractive as I would have liked them to be. Okay. And, you know, and, and not just uh, looks wise, right? There's other aspects to a woman's attraction. So what I started to do is I started to invite them to uh, fun activities, right? And we'll talk about how to do that. There's a way to approach women in your early 20s after college that works a lot better than what you're traditionally taught. What you're traditionally taught is you're taught to like, you know, ask a woman out, go through the dating process, um, use apps. You know, I find that those are not super helpful for guys at that, at that age. If you're getting a shit ton of matches, great. But for most guys, they don't get a lot of matches, right? 
So you want to be filling up your week with stuff to do. I, I would recommend if you're not a big fan of drinking, then you tend to go to more physical events. Um, but if you're comfortable going out and there's alcohol around and you're down to drink or you're down to just, you know, maybe keep it lighter or don't drink so much, definitely want to go to nightlife events where people are at because people in their early 20s, that's where they're at. All right. When you go out to some of these venues, you will be competing with guys who are older than you, right? Guys in their late 20s and beyond, they have more money than you. They have more experience than you, right? They are going to have a lot of advantages. What do you have? Your social circle, okay? If I'm a guy in my early 30s, how many people do you think I hang out with that are in their early 20s? I know some women in their early 20s. But to be honest, dude, I don't like hanging around them that much. There needs to be a buffer. There needs to be some people around my age. If I hang out with women who are 21 years old as a 33-year-old man, dude, just hearing them talk makes me nauseous. <laughs> they talk about nonsense. Their conversations are nonsense to me, and I can't stand it. But they're attractive, right? They look good, and that's their biggest plus. But for me... You, I'm not going to be able to compete with you guys because you are probably going to know people. You're probably going to be comfortable hanging out with them. You're probably going to have mutual friends. Women are going to be more likely to stay with a guy who they know. They're going to be more likely to stay with a guy who's comfortable in their friend circle. You think she's going to bring a 35-year-old man to hang out with her friends? That guy is going to be – he's going to be out of there if he has half a brain, right? Women love hanging around with their friends. They love it. And at that age, because they're insecure, they don't want to do anything themselves. They only do want to do what their friends want to do. That is going to be the thing that is, uh, is going to make the difference. And so that's why guys in their early 20s tend to date more women in their early 20s than guys later on. Sure, sure. Guys later on, you know, you can still be attractive to them. They're still attractive to you. And if you keep up with it, you can. But I would say um, the vast majority of relationships are between people who are, you know, within two to three years of each other right be the guy who she knows women will pick men who they know and who will be cool to take them around their friends more than they will with a guy who isn't right men who are in their early 30s have very little social status and are not someone they can make or meet friends with though okay so as you get into your 30s you have less friends less friends at that age these are all positives that you need to use to your advantage all right okay so we've talked about um yeah we've talked about what some of your advantages are. Let's talk about the person in question. This is the one we're focusing on. This is the woman that you're trying to sleep with. This is the woman that you're trying to get into relationships with. If you guys want to get a girlfriend, okay, what are these, what is going on in a young woman's mind? What does she want at that age, right? Dealing with younger women who are almost as dumb as you are is a challenge, okay? A lot of young women don't really know what they want. A lot of young women think they want something, say they want something, do something completely different. And when they do get what they want, sometimes they'll throw it to the side, right? Young women like to have fun. They like to be around their friends. They are incredibly insecure no matter how hot they are. Young women in their early 20s are incredibly insecure. They are fed messages of women that are hotter than them on a daily basis. They are hearing about things going on in their social circle that is bad about them on a daily basis. Dude, there are women who start hate groups about other women. When women get together, they are not friendly to each other. They act friendly to each other. They will tear each other down. They will form alliances. They will betray each other. They will do traitorous things. And they are just not the cute and kind, cuddly creatures that all men or all the society likes to believe. All right? And on top of that, they've been brought up in a school system that tells them to hate men all the time, right? They've been oppressed and all of this nonsense, right? So they tend to go for the same guys and get played by those guys. That's another thing, too. Women at this age have no shortage of men that are trying to sleep with them. But the men that they go for are typically men that are above their mate value. So they go for men that are above their mate value, meaning guys that are either more attractive than them, higher in social status than them, um, you know, or just have more better stuff than them um, that makes them a higher mate value. Normally it's attractiveness and social status, but when you're going for guys that are like that, that are above in mate value, then you guess what? He has a lot of women that he can pick from who are at that same level. So do you think that guy sticks around with them? Do you think that guy turns into their boyfriend? No, 
most of the time they get lied, they get cheated on, they get manipulated, they get gaslighted, and then they think all men are like this because the only guys who they've focused on, the only guys who they've picked are the guys who don't respect them or really take, uh, they're not, they don't consider them significant, right? I have been this guy, right? I've been this guy to a lot of women. When you are this guy, you literally don't remember them. You forget them. And so women, they're fed, they have a very distorted view of men. It's kind of like how men focus on like the small percentage of super hot women that get everything handed to them. Women think the same thing about men. They think that men are just liars and cheaters um, because the only men that they're focusing on are the men who are doing those things to them. But if they took a guy who was at a lower mate value than them, who's probably going to be nicer and, and, you know, treat them way better, they probably wouldn't think that. But they don't because their biology is drawn to those men. Okay. Men, on the other hand, don't get um, attention from women. Yes, these women will get attention from the guys that they are attracted to and want to get into relationships with, but those men also are lying and sleeping with a bunch of different women. Men, on the other hand, don't even get that. They get nothing. So a lot of these men feel invisible, right? They have absolutely no idea, and women have absolutely no idea that men are going through this. They think like a guy's life is awesome because that's what they've been taught in school. They've been taught that they are the oppressed ones. So how do you deal with this, right? The good news is that women learn. Women will understand your experience as time goes on, right? And it's important not to act super cool all the time. That was one thing that I did when I was at that age. I would try and act like I was cooler than I was. But when I started being vulnerable, that's when women would shed their guard down. That's when women would actually treat me a lot better right, was when I was vulnerable and when I was real. Look, I couldn't compete with a lot of men in other categories, but I could be the one who was real. And that actually made my approaches a lot better, right? So dealing with younger women can be a nightmare, but women also have to deal with younger women, right? Keep that in mind. You think it's annoying to deal with women? Women think it's annoying to deal with women. So, you know, once you understand this, once you understand what's going on in her mind, and you can tend you tend to have a lot more sympathy for them. As I've grown older, I have nothing but empathy for younger women going through this. Right? They do stupid things, you know. I'm not saying that women don't come with problems. They do. But as I've had more success with women, and as you have more success with women, this anger that you feel towards them, I promise you, will go down. Didn't have this when I was twenty two. I hated women when I was 22. I'm going out, approaching them constantly. I'm getting nothing. You know, I'm getting ghosted all the time. I'm seeing them getting to clubs for free, not spending any money while I'm spending all the little money that I had to get into the same area, wait in a longer line, get ignored. And you deal with all of this constantly. And you, it, it's really tough not to hate women at that time. But trust me, once things started to flip, once I started having success with women, once I started seeing myself becoming the bad guy, that's when I started to see the empathy. That's when I started to see, oh, okay, yeah, women are actually dealing with a lot too. In my opinion, um, I think there are a lot of things that are tougher about being a younger guy, um, but women have it pretty rough too. Women have it pretty rough too. All right, so now we've learned a little bit about the mind of a younger woman. Now, what are you doing as a guy? What's the things that you gotta start doing? You got to start going out, okay? So as a guy who's under the age of 25, if a weekend goes by and you didn't go out at least twice, that is a sin. In my opinion, it's a sin even if you're older. But it's an especially big sin if you're under 25 and do this, right? Now, you're probably wondering, well, Lloyd, where do I go? I just went over the section about the, some of the places to go. You can go to bars, you can go to parties, you can go to events, you can find events online, right? Um, if you don't like bars and clubs, I have tons of videos about events and things to do that aren't bars and clubs, right? You can find a full list of places in my school group, okay? So if you wanna join the free school group, there's a link down in the description below. I would go check out a full list of stuff there. I have videos on it. Um, but 
don't wait until a friend invites you out. If you're a guy who's waiting on people to invite you out, guess what? You're going to be waiting a pretty long time. That's stuff that women do. If you're a young woman, you can wait for somebody to invite you out. And guess what? There's probably going to be plenty of guys or gals that will invite you out. But if you're a man, no one is coming to save you. You got to go out there and you got to take it yourself. And that's what I did. I didn't have friends that were inviting me out. Or if they did, they invited me out to somewhere stupid that I didn't want to go and wouldn't have any, you know, women to talk to. It was going to be some, you know, nerdy thing that, you know, it was just going to be me talking and hanging out with people that, you know, I wasn't really trying to become better friends with. So for me, I went out by myself. I did this many times until I found wingmen and friends to go out with. That is another thing you can use my school group for. So I'd recommend that you join that if you're watching this, right? Start by joining the activities that you like and find wingmen there. So I did a lot of activities that I liked. I, like I said, I was doing intramural soccer. I was doing Toastmasters. And then on the weekends, I was going out to pretty much every single... I, I had something planned every single day of the week. Back then, Facebook events were really big. So what I would do is I would like every single uh, event that was going on. I would say interested. And then Facebook would uh, start recommending me events all the time. And I would see that if my friends were going or not. It was, uh, yeah, it was a really good way to be social. It does, that doesn't really work so much anymore, um, but find stuff online and become members of it. You can use meetup.com. You can use a lot of things. I don't recommend you stay using meetup.com, but it's a good place to start, right? Use the resources that you have, right? Reach out to old friends from college or school that you've neglected and start there. If you don't have anywhere, start there and start by inviting them to do the stuff that you want to do. And whoever shows up and joins you, those are the friends that you'll keep. And the ones that don't, well, then you know maybe you'll see him eventually in the future but if you have a goal you have to be prepared to leave the people behind that don't want to go with you that aren't on the same path and that's part of life ditch the dates this is another thing that i see guys in their early 20s doing that's wrong they they want because they're taught that going on dates is the thing to do like that's what they're doing women under the age of 25 don't like dates right dating is most of a waste of, mostly a waste of time unless the girl is like really religious or conservative. She never goes out um, and you're trying to, you know, go towards marriage or, you know, um, at the very least, like a very committed relationship, even for a committed relationship. I'd recommend that you choose fun over a super formal date. OK, most women are going to want to have fun with their friends. If you ask them, would you rather go on an awkward date, which it probably will be awkward if, you know, both of you are under 25 and you're still trying to figure it out. Um, would she rather go on that or would she rather have a fun night or day with her friends? She's going to choose the friends every single time. She feels more comfortable around them. You know, she knows how to have fun. She doesn't freeze up. The other guy's not going to make these weird, awkward attempts to kiss her, you know, or act weird or do sketchy things around her. Okay. Of course, she's going to pick her friends. So you got to be in tune with that and you got to invite her to fun things as opposed to dates. After you've spent time at the fun thing, you've gotten to know her, you guys have flirted, you guys have gone back and forth, then you can ask her out to a date because you know she likes you. You guys are already comfortable with each other. Don't waste your time going on a bunch of dates, right? Yeah, I would do some dates during the week occasionally, but in my opinion, the best things that I did was going out, meeting people, having fun, and inviting them to fun things. I had much more success doing that than I ever did you know, inviting them out to a formal date, right? Do this with a lot of women, right? Making female friends is not a bad thing. Some of these women will become your friends. You know, maybe it doesn't work out for dating, but you have to think about the long game here, right? In my course, in my uh, program, I talk about the story of two bulls. The story of two bulls goes like this. One bull is sitting, um, so there's two bulls that are on top of a hill. At the bottom of the hill are thousands of cows. Now, the older bull is a little bit higher than the younger bull. The younger bull looks up at the older bull and says, hey, let's run down this hill and fuck one of these cows. And the older bull looks down at the younger bull and says, no, let's walk down and fuck them all. That's really what you have to do is you have to walk down that hill. Okay, and too many under 25 year old guys are running down that hill and all the cows are running away from them. All right. Fun is the most important currency for women. 
Putting yourself in a high status social position by bringing people to fun is the way that you are going to be successful. So what can this look like? Let's give you an example. So I'll tell you what some of the examples are real quick. One thing that really worked for me was when I was in San Francisco, if I invited a woman out to a formal date or drinks, sometimes she'd ghost me. Sometimes it wouldn't go the way I wanted it to. And then, you know, I just wasted a, a couple nights and, and money buying this girl drinks, trying to get her to, you know, trying to make progress with this person, right? It was much better if I invited her out to, you know, we would be out at Dolores Park or something. I invite her out to Dolores Park. She comes through. Maybe she brings a few friends. We all hang out there. There's a bunch of people there. There's not a lot of awkward silences. She can hang out with her friends if she wants to. She can uh, meet some of my friends. But there's, it, there is going to be some time for us to hang out together, right? That is a much better environment. We get to know each other more. She gets to feel me out. She gets to see if she really likes me. Right. And most of the time in this environment, she's going to like me a lot more than if I'm like trying to win her over in this like weird game that we play when we take women out on dates. OK, she's more comfortable there. Then after that, I invite her out later that night. We hang out. We have a good time. If we hook up, great. If we don't, then I can invite her out to a date after that where we probably will where we probably will uh, maybe get more intimate and further the relationship from there. OK, it's a lot better than if you inviting her out for drinks, then you invite her out again, and then by the third time, well, it's the third time now, so she's supposed to hook up with you, you know, it, it's just a, it's just a, it's a moronic game um, to play. Not to say that dating is bad, but the way people go about dating is not the way that you want to do it. You got to learn game. If you're a guy who's under 25, you have to learn game. Game is basically getting her to feel good and turned on when she's around you. How do you do this? How do you do this? Well, you got to practice. I have tons of lines and, and things and exercises that you can do as you go through my program. But when you do this, you have to practice them. I got good just by, you know, riffing and being myself and seeing what worked and what didn't work for me. And then I came up with the lines and I came up with the, um, the exercises from that. And I also learned from other people, too. But you should be approaching women and people frequently. You're going to mess up and you're going to learn. You're going to say a joke. It doesn't land. You're going to make a flirting remark and it doesn't, doesn't go very well. There's a little bit of an awkward tension there. That's fine. Then you learn that you know being subtle is a little bit better, but having this undertone is good. Having the mentality is there. You're going to learn all of that stuff by doing this. But most young guys have zero game sober and aren't much better drunk. The only way they can flirt with people is if they get super drunk. If you go out there and you practice and you internalize this, you are actually going to be able to do this. I can't tell you the number of guys that I've taken in, my, in their late 20s and early 30s that have never done this, that have zero game, that have no success with women, and now they're trying to learn. Now they're trying to learn, and it's not, you know, they don't really want to go out because they've built up the habits about doing that, and, you know, they're really struggling, okay? This is the time to learn this shit. You have to be going out and talking to people, okay? If you don't learn how to flirt and physically escalate with women, you will meet tons of women and none of them will sleep with you. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that I want you guys getting out as much as possible and meeting as many people as possible, which is exactly what I was doing. You know, I was probably approaching, realistically, 20 women a week, minimum. 20 women a week. And it wasn't like I was going out and I was go wa walking around shopping malls. I was going to social events while I did it. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Yes, there was women that I would approach during the day. Um, but it wasn't as many as, or if I was at the coffee shop or if I was going for a walk or if I was at a park. Yes, I would approach women there. But most of the time I was going to social events and I was approaching women there. So at a minimum, I'm approaching 20 women, right? A week. In a month, that's 80. In a year, that's over a thousand. Okay, and that's the minimum. I'd say probably two thousand to three thousand women a year I was approaching. Because in a festival, you can do you can do twenty no problem in a day. You know, um, flirting, teasing, and pacing are all extremely important. You're gonna learn how to do that by going out and approaching. And by the way, those are crazy numbers for me. But if your number is like I approached one woman last month, good God, dude. How do you expect, how you expect to get good? How do you expect to learn this stuff? You got to interact with people and putting your reps in. What we're becoming is we're becoming more isolated as a society and under 25 year olds are becoming more and more com um, comfortable not doing this. And then that's why we're having such a 
large influx of uh, of incels and sexless men. Okay, is is because of this. It's quite simply because of this. Okay, so having someone who is going out with you can help. Having a guy to mentor you and lead you and tell you where to go and tell you what to say and do can help. So you know, like, if you have no sort of direction, if you have no sort of mentor you really start to judge yourself very harshly, okay? But having somebody there that's telling you you're doing the right things, even when you feel like you messed up, dude, I mean, that's so huge. Like, for me, all the guys that I hung out with were older than me. They were they were mentors to me. I knew I was doing the right thing because these guys have been doing it for longer than me, and they're doing just fine, right? In fact, one of the guys I hung out with, I mean, he had slept with so many women that it was, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> hanging out with a guy like this if you're going out, but um, for me, it worked. So, I learned a lot from being around guys who were older that could show me the way, that could show me that what I was doing was actually correct. So I wouldn't second guess myself all the time. And that that is extremely important. Okay. The number one skill for under 25 year olds, if I haven't emphasized this enough, it's leading people to fun. Okay. Bring women in. Let me make this smaller. Uh, bring women in, make them friends. Get social status, okay? So if you lead people to fun, it's going to look like this. I'll explain. So let's say um, I'm out one day and, you know, we're at the park, okay? If I meet some people at the park, what am I going to do? I'm going to lead them to fun. My The fun that's there is this picnic blanket that I've set up with a couple of my buddies, and we're playing, uh, we're playing card games, right? We can start with card games. You can play, be playing soccer. You can be playing throwing the frisbee, whatever it is, you invite them to come to your, you invite them to come to your picnic blanket. We bust out some of the wine. We give them some wine. We start talking. We start playing card games. We start playing some drinking games. Then some other people walk by, see us having fun. I talk to them. I bring them in. Guess what just happened? I just turned our picnic blanket from three guys not doing shit to a freaking party. Now the girls can interact with each other. They can interact with us. And I just became the highest social status person of that group. Why? Because I'm the reason why everybody's talking. I'm the picnic blanket that they're on. Too many guys are hoping to infiltrate somebody else's group, follow them, and then they're wondering why no women want to get with them. No one want to get no women want to get with that guy because that guy's not leading. How, how can they be attracted to a guy? How can they follow a guy who is following them, who's following their group? He has no social power at all. Right? So I'll see guys approach women and they'll like go off with them somewhere. Go off with the group. Unless that guy is like substantially higher in mate value than the girl he's going off with, she probably is not going to really be romantically interested in him. She's not going to want to hook up with him. But the guy who brings her into his group, hey, come meet my friends, right? We're going to bounce to the next place. You should come with. Yeah, they, they got this cool uh, dance floor set up. We're going to do some dance moves or whatever it is. You know, if she's following you, then much more likely that it's going to happen. Much more likely that it's going to happen. Right? And if she's not down to do what you want to do, that's fine. Maybe get her phone number, meet up, meet up with her later. But the important thing is, is you are inviting women to follow you. There is no partner. There is no courtship dance on the planet where the woman leads. You have to be that guy. But the problem with men when they are below the tw age of 25 is they have never been taught to get people to follow them. They have only followed other people. You have to learn this skill. Lead people to fun. Okay, so learn what you enjoy when you're out. Figure out how to bring, pe bring people in. Easy one, if you're at the bar, is you invite someone to c come play a game of pool with you and your friend. You know, darts, arcade games, whatever. You can invite them to come check out a new venue. You can, in, you know, if you're, if you're pre-gaming at home, you can organize a drinking game, right? The easiest one, in my opinion, is to come and have them introduce them to your friends. I, there's so many guys who go out with people and then they just talk with the girl and then they come back and they don't think about bringing that girl back to meet their friend. Why? She wants to know that you have friends. She wants to know that you're not just like this lone wolf or whatever. And then you guys as a group can go somewhere else. And then if things go well, then you can, you're eventually going to branch off and do your own thing. And then you can, you know, separate and 
go your separate ways. But you have to think about things that way. But men have been taught to follow all the time so much that they, that they don't even think about it. They don't even think about that. So figure out what you like to do while you're out. That's another important thing. It's another question. I, I really need to emphasize this. You know, figure out what's fun for you. That's one of the first things that we figure out in the coaching program is what what is actually enjoyable to you and how do you bring people into that? That's what's going to make you the most attractive. When you're having the most fun, that's when you're the most attractive. The guys that think about getting the girls when they go out don't get any girls. But the guys that think about getting fun first and then getting women second, they're the ones who get them. Okay, so you got to establish this first. Learning how to do that is a skill. It took me a while to learn this. I was just going out constantly, or aimlessly, just trying to get laid, just trying to get laid, just trying to get laid. But once I started figuring out how to have fun, which it took me a while, because you know sometimes by accident I would have fun, and then I would get a girl, and then I'd be like, okay, well I need to replicate this and do this, this do this again. Um, th that's the kind of thing that really made me successful. Okay, what to say and do as an under under twenty five year old. Oh my God. Okay. So uh, very simply, if you want more examples, I would recommend that you go to my school group. Um, I'm creating a list of opening lines. It's not quite ready yet, but it's going to be ready. Um, so it doesn't matter what you say, it's how you say it. So you'll have some of these, some of those lines there, but honestly, just going in and saying, making an observation, they're wearing a sweatshirt, you know, if a girl has a UCSB sweatshirt. I'm like, Oh shit. Did you go to UCSB? No way. You know? And then from there, you know, Oh cool. Um, how's it going? I'm Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, I moved around here recently. What about you? You know? So you, you can go in with an observation, right? You can also go in with that comment that I made at the beginning. Oh, hey, I just saw you over there. I thought you looked cute. I thought I'd come say hi. If you can't think of anything, you can turn to that one. But me personally, I think that has a lower hit rate than just going in indirectly and making a conversation about, you know, you can even cheer somebody at the, at the bar and be like, what's up? How's your night going? I'm Lloyd. Oh, you seem cool. Come meet my friends, right? You know, easy as that, right? What you have to do is you have to have a list of questions that are like normal questions um, that you can turn to. And as, you, as you're going out and you're socializing, you can start saying crazier and crazier and crazier things. <laughs> like I picked up a girl one time at the bar by flipping her off. That's not very nice. How did I do that? Is it because it was the way I did it and it was like I was kind of in the zone and, you know, she had this pissed off look at her face and she was looking at me. So I flipped her off and she came over and she's like, why'd you flip me off? And I was like, I don't know. You look like you were, you were mean, mac mean mugging me. I wasn't going to take that. Anyway, what's your name? I'm Lloyd. Sorry about that. <laughs> it just didn't matter. Right. And yes, I hooked up with her that night. Right. So it, it doesn't matter what you say at first, but whatever you do, go in a hundred percent. Too many guys are like preparing themselves to get rejected. And so they don't go in a hundred percent. If I'm going to flip somebody off with a cheeky smile, I'm doing it 100%. I'm not like, Ugh. I'm like, that's going to work way more. Then if she does that, and yes, I know I have a little bit of a creepy smile already, but if you go in a hundred percent, it's way more likely to work, right? So, um, that, that's, that's the way of doing that. Now you have a list of questions like, where are you from? What do you do afterwards that you can turn? So she knows you're a normal person. She knows that you're not crazy. Um, you're just, you're doing that to be uh, provocative. Now, if you're doing that after an easy way to flirt with somebody is by playful assumptions. Like, you know, she tells you her job. She says she's a nurse. And I'd be like, I, I could totally tell you were a nurse. Or she said she was a psych major in college. Oh, psych major, huh? Saw that one coming, you know? And then she, now she's a little, now she's a little irritated. Now she's like, well, why did you think that, right? And you're like, I could tell, like, you, you're, you're, you seem like a pretty analytical person. I could tell you're analyzing this conversation right now. Are you? Am I wrong? Right? And now she's going to either say whether you're right or you're wrong. Then you have some little playful things. Now, if you go too far in one direction, then you apologize. You say, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. You're very cute. Didn't mean to say all that, right? <laughs> it doesn't. So y you just have to like, it's better than you just saying the, the nice, normal thing. And that's it. Okay. Um, another thing that I do is, uh, I like to assume that she's hitting on me, you know, like in your early twenties, that can, that can work a little bit better than when you're older. Um, you know, she says something like, oh, well, uh, you know, maybe we could hang out later. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
we got to get to know each other before we hang out later. <laughs> Silly. Um, avoid serious topics or conversations, right? If you're talking to somebody and she's out there having a good time, you do not want to bring in super philosophical debates. I know it's tempting when you meet a woman. Like if I met a woman who's really into physics and I'm a physics major, which I am, I want to talk about physics. But I know that's not going to get her aroused. I know that's not going to be she'll, – she'll be like she'll have a great engaging talk. And you know what she's going to do? She's going to walk away. She's going to go to a guy who she can get you know that burning desire for. And then she'll be like, I had a great conversation with that guy. He's going to make a great friend. No, you still have to flirt. You still have to be fun. You still have to tease. Do all that stuff, right? If you want to get into all that, you can talk about that later after you've established attraction, okay? Cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about – I know um, we have about 55 minutes. Okay, so we'll probably talk for another um, 10 minutes about this. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about examples of guys that I've helped. So you've seen my example. How did that work for me, okay? There are other guys that I've personally walked through who are in their early 20s who are having these exact same issues that I talked about, okay? So what did they do to make themselves successful, right? So we're going to go into that right now. So here's one of my clients. We're just going to call him Guy. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's a big deal if I give their first name, but, um, you know, for the sake of privacy, um, we're just going to call him guy. So this guy had no luck with approaching women. All right. So when we first started coaching, he was not dating the women that I would consider to be at his level. He wasn't a bad looking guy, but he also wasn't a great looking guy. Okay. But the women that he was dating were not great looking. They were bad. All right. And you know, I really, he, he knew it too. He knew deep down in his heart, like this is what he needed to get better at. And if he didn't improve in this area, he was going to continue to date these women and eventually get stuck with that for the rest of his life. So after a few sessions, he got better at approaching women and bringing women into his fun. Okay. So I saw him do this. He was getting better at talking to women. He's getting better at approaching and he was getting a lot more attention from the higher uh, quality women that he was looking for. Right. Started getting interest from hotter and hotter women. Two months after he started coaching with me, he sent me this message. He was with this gorgeous girl out in the ocean. Um, and, uh, he's like, what the fuck did you do to me, man? Been hanging with this girl from France too. Again, thank you. If you had a Google review page or something, I could write you a nice long review. Okay. That wasn't the only message he sent me. He's gotten with a lot of different women, um, who he really, really was like, dude, this is the kind of girl that I've been trying to date my whole life. Okay. And the reason why he wasn't able to do that is because he didn't have the setup. He was going about it all wrong, right? He didn't know how to lead. He didn't know how to take charge. He didn't know how to lead people to fun. He didn't know how to um, escalate physically. He didn't have game, right? All of these things matter, all right? And so once he started learning all of those different elements, piecing them all together, yeah, he was able to do it. Most guys as, at his age um, are not capable of doing that, okay? Here's another one. This guy was a guy who came to me. He was he had just got out of a situationship with a woman who, uh, I'll be honest, was you know not someone who was very stable. Okay, she, you know, wasn't a person who I would consider uh, to be anything that anybody should get into a relationship with. Okay, so he wanted to be able to consciously date. He wanted to get over a situationship. He wasn't even in a relationship with this person. He was in a situationship and he was crying over her all the time. Right. He was constantly doubting himself. He was putting women on a pedestal and going crazy with his thoughts. OK, he was constantly getting ghosted. He dealt with these challenges his entire life. OK, and on top of that, he felt like if he didn't get with this situation, he wasn't going to get success with other women at all. OK, after three months, he, uh, he got several new sexual encounters. He broke it off and moved on with the situation. So he knew he could get options. He knew he could do better. Right. Um, and he dealt with. Uh, um, he, he got a new friend and a wingman from the program. So yeah, I set him up with a wingman. Sometimes I'll do that. And then after six months, he ended up getting into a new relationship with a much stable person. Um, and as far as I know, I, I think they're still together. Okay. So if you are in this position where you've dealt with women who, you know, you have trouble getting over, you know, they're not right for you, but you're scared to move on and you won't be able to find someone who you're actually that into. Like this guy is a perfect example of that because that definitely is something that I see a lot of guys struggling with, right? And by the way, I've helped a lot of guys who have had no success, who are virgins in their early 20s, right? No success with women at all. Um, I have tons of those examples. 
Um, this, this is just not one of them. Cool. So here's another example. Um, all right. So the, the photo on the left is the photo of when he was working with me. This is a photo of him a while later. He upped his look game a little bit. Um, but in, on the left is when he was with me. He was like skinnier. He had this kind of weird smile on his face. Um, he had gone on 20 plus dates with no second date. 20 dates, no second date. Okay. After working with me for literally one weekend, this was back when I was like, my private coaching was a lot cheaper, right? His, after doing that, he ended a five months dry spell. He slept with two different women in 24 hours and he started dating one of those women seriously, right? <laughs> one of the bigger turnarounds that I've had, definitely not the biggest, but uh, one of the bigger turnarounds that I've had. So he started dating one of them long term. And then later on, you know, after we'd worked together longer, he started doing this more consistently. Um, and, you know, his buddies that he used to hang out with, he eventually ended up bringing one of those girls home um, when nine times out of 10, his buddy was the guy who uh, was always going home with the, with the girl. So if you have buddies that are doing extremely well with women and you're like, God, you know, I, why are these guys always successful and not me? He felt like that too. Then he started doing better than his friends, right? I mean, I know, I know what that feels like because that's the position that I was in. <laughs> All the guys in college were, were doing very well with women and I felt like I wasn't getting anything. And then later on in life, they're asking me for advice. Cool. So those are the three examples. And like I said, dude, I have, I have one more example that I'll share with you guys. You know, I took a guy who was like, you know, 24 years old, virgin, never dated anyone. And he told me, he said he, at the beginning when he, when he paid me the money, he was like, Lloyd, do you really think I can do this? And I was like, dude, I know you can do this. Okay. Within three months, he was dating women. He had never dated women before, right? He's going on dates. Within six months, he has he had had a girlfriend, and he's still with that girl today, right? And then I showed him the video because I recorded it. I showed him the video of him saying, do you think I can do this? This is a guy who didn't think he was good looking. This is a guy who thought that, um, you know, no women that he liked would like him back. I showed him that video, and uh, he, was, he was laughing at it, you know? It wasn't like tears of, you know, I usually don't get people crying on my calls, um, but he was laughing. He thought it was a, uh, he thought it was hilarious that he used to think that that's what happens when you become a new person. Right. But in your early twenties, sometimes you can build up, like if you've not taken action or the right kinds of action for long enough, you can get into a point where you feel like this is me, this is my life. And it's not at 25, dude, that is not your life. You can absolutely improve it. Right. 25 is young, but it's not young. I'll, I'll explain in a second. Okay. So here are the biggest mistakes that men make. All right. Under the age of 25, uh, a lot of them ignore their looks because they feel like they can't change. Yeah, that's a small one. You should improve your looks, um, but they're not the biggest thing, right? Being lazy. That's a big one right there. Being lazy, right? You get told a lot when you're under 25, oh, you got time. And because you've been following, you know, what everybody else has told you to do your entire life, you haven't taken agency over your own uh, experience, then you start to think, you start to cope. And you, you cope by doing things that aren't actually productive for you, right? Um, only lifting weights and doing zero cardio. I mean, that's more of a, that's more of a looks-based thing. Like a lot, of, um, a lot of guys will just go to the gym, not do any cardio, and they get a little belly, and you know, their body doesn't look too good. So you, gotta, you guys got to do cardio as well too. Okay, not following the steps to here. The, the, not following the steps here, giving up too easily, right? If you follow the steps, you will be successful. But a lot of people, they try a few approaches and they're just like, ah, I tried it. It doesn't work, bro. I tried it for a year. Didn't give up, got amazing success, right? You can try it and you can do it wrong. Do you think if Michael Jordan, the first time he shot a basketball and he missed, he was like, oh, it doesn't work. I can't play basketball. No, he knows that if he shoots it enough times, he's going to get better at making it. And yeah, even when he hits the pros, he's still going to miss. 
but he makes more than he misses now. And that's the important thing is like to not see it as that. If you're it, it, the, the other problem too, is that some people can grow up a little bit entitled. Um, and so they feel like the results should come easy to them because they've come easy for other people. Right. I wanted the results to be like my six foot four, 230 pound, good looking, born from a rich family guy who literally was getting women like running over to him to try and have sex with him. I thought my life was going to be like that. It should be that easy. But guess what? I'm not 6'4". I didn't come from money. I, I, I'm not as good looking as he is. And so my path is going to be different. My path is going to be one that's going to require effort. And yours, if you're watching this video, I guarantee you yours is going to be as well too. The biggest mistake I see a lot of guys is they want things to be a certain way and it's not. Right. And that's, and that comes down to being too impatient with women and themselves. Right. You got to put in the work. You got to do the right. And, and it doesn't even take that much work if you do the right things. It's just a lot of, a lot of them don't know what the right things are because they're looking in the wrong areas. Right. Spending too much time on non growth related activities, video games, watching shows, porn, all of that stuff isn't going to help you level up, you guys. And the problem is most guys cope by doing those things constantly and they're staying in the same place and their confidence and their belief in themselves is just going lower and lower and lower because they're not taking action. You gain confidence by saying what you're going to do and then going out and doing it. Right. You gain confidence by showing improvement. But too many people. They expect a certain kind of improvement, and when they don't get it, they give up. And they're not getting feedback from somebody who's been in the game and, and knows, what it's, uh, knows what it's like. So that comes to procrastinating on their personal development. What's the biggest reason why people procrastinate on their personal development? Because people in their early 20s think they have time. I'll just wait till I'm older. You know, I've had some guys in their early 20s say that they're just going to wait until they're older and their sexual market value is higher. No. Homie. You might be older, but your sexual market value ain't going to increase unless you make it increase. Okay, so you got to develop good habits. If you do, if you like get in the habit of not taking action and just waiting and not doing anything, that is a bad habit. That is a habit that is unattractive to women. Women don't want that shit. Right? So a lot of people say that, you know, in their early 20s, they're like, oh, I'll just do that later. Or, I'll, I'll have time. I'll just play this video game now or I'll just do this right now. And, you know, I'm not going to handle this stuff later. Uh, so I'm not going to handle this stuff right now. I'll handle it later. So a lot of people think this, but you really don't have as much time as you think. Okay. I'll put it to you this way. One year for a 40 year old is 2.5% of their life. One year for a five year old is 20% of their life. So the perspective of how long your life is, if you actually look at it from that way, Based on the numbers, that means your midpoint in life is 21 years old. And by the way, that's um, if the average age is 70. If you're going to live to be 74, your perceived halfway point in your life is 21 years old. Because that's how a long time feels when it's like that. No time doesn't actually get slower or faster, well, depending on your point of reference, if you want to take the point of relativity. But if you are perceiving the world in a certain way, 21 is where life might feel like your halfway point, right? You do not have all the time in the world. I am not saying that you're going to die tomorrow. I'm not saying that if you're older, you can't change things around. I am saying that if you are 21 right now and you think, oh, I'm young, I have all the time in the world to figure this stuff out. No, you don't. No, you don't. Start now. Regret is worse than rejection. Trust me, as a 33-year-old man, I am proud of the work that I put in. As a 33-year-old man, I can look back and say, hey, there are times where I could have, you know, honestly, like I still have regret. I still could have done things better. But I have a lot less regret than if I had not done anything. Rejection is not that bad in comparison to that. Think about when you're older. Are you going to regret taking more action and trying or are you going to regret sitting at home doing nothing not trying saying oh I'll do this later I'll put my time energy and money into you know uh, like a new watch or you know that new PS5 
I mean, maybe you really like the PS5. I don't know. But really think about where your priorities are. Think about what kind of regret you're going to have when you're on your deathbed. I know for me, I'm not going to regret one single approach I did. I'm not going to regret one single time I went out and was social. There were times where I was tired. There were times where I wanted to stay home and do nothing. Yeah, I could have saved that money that I paid for that pickup coach and done something else. I could have been like, you know, I could have spent all that money. He was me. No, I, I learned I learned a lot during that time, even if even though he was not a good coach. Even though he just called and quit on me, didn't refund my money, and left me to the curb. Yeah, I could have said I regretted that, but I didn't because I put myself out there. I had a goal, and I was heading towards it, right? Regret is worse than rejection. I have not regretted one single rejection I've ever gotten in my life. But I have regretted all the times that I didn't take the opportunity, that I didn't try. I've regretted it a lot. At 21, b below 25, this is the time for you to be making mistakes. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Not five years from now. Now. Okay. So what are the next steps now? You are probably... So if you made it this far, it means you're probably taking this seriously. And you're probably one of two people. Either number one, you like the information and are just going to go on to another free YouTube video later. And maybe you'll execute. Maybe you won't. Okay. Or number two, you are tired of watching these videos and not getting results and are ready to make an actual change in your life. So figure out which one you are right now. One or two. The guy who is... You know, like the information is just going to go watch more free content and maybe you'll execute or the guy who's like, dude, I'm committed. I'm ready to take action. I'm ready to take this to the next level. Which one are you right now? If your answer was number one, thanks so much for coming. Hopefully I'll see you again in, you know, one of these other trainings or, you know, uh, maybe another free video. Um, well, I won't see you, but, you know, you'll be there. Uh, you can find additional free resources and wingmen in your area by joining the free school group. So um, you can find that in the description box below. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming if you're number one. Or number two, you're serious about making a change in your life and you're tired of just watching free content and not getting anywhere. So then consider working with a professional like myself to really get these issues handled. Do all the examples of guys that I've worked with, like these are guys whose lives I've changed around. This is what I do on a daily basis. Um, and we use practical actions to get you to where you want to go. So 99.9% .9 of all guys who spend time watching content online don't actually make a change in their life. I get so many views on YouTube or like my videos, the subscribers, all that stuff. You see how many people are watching dating content. How many of those people actually get success? Dude, everybody's watching dating content these days. How many of them actually change their lives? Not very many. Not very many. It's the men who are willing to make an actual commitment to get it done. If you're just doing what everybody else is doing and watching free content, no wonder you're getting what everybody else has gotten, which is not great results, right? So if you are that person that is what wants to make an actual commitment to get this done, then click the link in the description, fill out the application to schedule a free call with me or a member of my team, and we will see if we can help you, dude. You know, Just by you putting in that effort, that shows me that you have the willingness to go out and do this. Yes, it does cost money. For me, when I joined, I didn't have a whole lot of money when I was, uh, when I, uh, I had my tech job, but I was living in San Francisco and blowing all, I had no, I had no savings. Um, so I spent all the money that I had, but every time I've bet on myself, every time I've invested money, it's paid off. So have some faith in yourself if that's what you're willing to do for this, right? You'll get a free call with me. We will be able to see what your blind spots are, what you need to do to get what you want, and whether you can get out there. So a big thing that a lot of people have trouble with is they don't know what their actual blind spots are. They think, oh, oh, my problem is I just don't know how to text women. I guarantee you that's not your only problem. Oh, my problem is, you know, um, I just don't, you know, I'm not tall enough. I guarantee you that's not your, that's not your problem. Okay. Uh, or, or whatever. Whatever you're telling yourself. Whatever your friends are telling you, I guarantee you that's not your problem. I have seen so many guys, and I can give you objective feedback about what you need to do, where you're lacking, what's possible for you, where you are on the scale. And um, then we'll see what we have to do to get to get you to be where you want to be. And I'll tell you if your goals are unreasonable. But most of the time when I take a guy, um, he's 
we can work with a lot of guys that think they have no chance. Okay, because I know the rules of the game. And luckily, as a guy, we have the ability to level up. With women, it's a little bit tougher. But um, for our guys, it's a lot more potential. Cool. All right, you guys. Well, that was the end of this video. Um, and I will, will, will leave you with just one thing um, after this, if you've made it this far. Typically, the people who don't take action or the people who click on this video, watch for 20 minutes, and then leave. But the people that stay, the people that are committed, there is something deeply gratifying about really going after a goal, about really committing yourself to it. You gain a level of respect for yourself that you can't gain anywhere else. And as an under 25 year old guy, that is invaluable. There's very few things that under 25 year old guys really apply themselves to, really go after and really try and make an effort in. And to be honest, that's the best time to do it because that's when you have energy. When you get older, you get tired, you wanna stay home more, your body aches. There's a lot of things that happen as you get older. And so what ends up happening is that most men, and most people never truly apply themselves and never truly go after their goal. And for me, as a guy who wants to maximize what he can achieve and be and experience in life, that is a mandatory thing that you have to do. Go all in on something, man. And if that's this, and if this is important to you, go all in on it and see how far you can go. I guarantee you, whatever happens, which if, you know, if we work together, you're going to get I'm going to make sure you get results. But even if you take that aside, the gratitude you will get and the appreciation you will get for yourself and the confidence that you will get for going out and applying yourself is, I think it's more important than the women. I think it's more important than the women. I really do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, you guys. Good luck out there.